Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at question 299 on lead code called bulls and cows. Uh, it's a fun little question, maybe a little bit on the easier side, but I think it's interesting nonetheless and worth talking about. So let's go through it. You are playing the following bulls and cows game with your friend. You write down a number and ask your friend to guess what the number is. Each time your friend makes a guess, you provide a hint that indicates how many digits in said guess match your secret number exactly in both digit and position. And we call these bulls. And how many digits match the secret number but locate in the wrong position, and we call these cows. Your friend will use successive guesses and hints to eventually derive the secret number. Okay, so they're asking us to rate a function to return a hint according to the secret number and the friend's guess. And we're gonna use A to indicate bulls and B to indicate cows. Note that both secret number and friend's guess may contain duplicate digits. Okay, so the logic here is probably best explained through some examples. So let's just go through some of those. Let's start with example one. <clears throat> so the input, they give us uh, the secret code as 1807 and we guess 7810. All right, so how many bulls and cows do we have? Um, <clears throat> this eight is in the correct location, so that's a bull, and we have no more bulls because everything else is in the wrong position. But the seven, one, and zero, they're all present in the secret code, but they're just in the wrong spot. So they're all cows, so we have one bull, three cows. The bull is the eight, and the cows are the zero, one, and the seven. That one's kind of easy, but let's do example two. So, secret code 1123, and the guess is 0111. Now, the correct output is one bull, one cow. Okay, so let's see how they got there. So, yeah, this one is in the correct spot. That's undeniably a bull. So, there's our bull, but then nothing else is in the right spot. So, then we look at, okay, how many cows do we have? Okay, and here's where it gets maybe a little confusing. It's because if you look at this one and the last one, right? the third and the fourth character in guess, you could make the same argument for each that, okay, this character is in the wrong spot, but it exists in secret key, okay? But they can't both be cows, and that just goes back to the details of the question, um, a little nuance, right? If we say this one is a cow, okay, so this one's in the wrong spot, it kind of consumes the corresponding digit in secret that lets it be a cow. So we can't say, so once we use up this one and say this one's a cow, we can't also say this one's a cow because technically there's no more ones left to give it cow ship. Weird word, but whatever. <laughs> okay, so yeah, they explain here that the first one in the friend's guess is a bull. So this one's the bull, right? And then the second or third one is a cow, but not both, only one. So that's going to make its way into our solution somehow that once we say something is either a bull or a cow, it kind of consumes that corresponding token in um, the secret code. Okay, and it notes here that we may assume that the secret number and our friend's guess only contain digits and their lengths are always gonna be equal. That's kind of nice. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna give you one more example that I made up on my own just to maybe make a certain point a little more obvious before we start. Okay. So th this example should illustrate why it's best. I think there's, there's probably a, a way you could do it in just one pass, but the solution I'm gonna use uses two passes um, of both lists. And the first pass is gonna address all the bulls and the second one is gonna address the cows. And the reason we do bulls first is because, okay, let's just look at secret and guess here. So the answer is gonna be, yeah, we have one bull and zero cows because this one is in the correct spot, and then it, this one is kind of consumed by that bull match. Sorry, I'll, I'll just do this so that it lines up nicely. So this one in secret kind of gets consumed by this character. And so this one has no other one to pair up with at, to become a cow. So if we were to do cows first, or if we were to just do this in order in one pass, if we were to first address this two and this one and go, oh yeah, this one here, it's, it's not in the right spot, but it exists in secret so okay it's a cow if we if we erroneously say that this thing is a cow then once we get to the next one we'll go oh wait no it's it's actually a bull so then we have to take away this one cow and we kind of have to do things in a clunky order so it makes better sense if we just do all the bulls first take a breather and then go back and do all the cows okay so let's code this 
hopefully that made things a little bit more straightforward. Okay, I will, I'll make it a bit bigger. Okay, first order of business is we have to make a counter object um, for the secret key. So pretty much just telling us for every single, single element in secret, what is the count of that um, element or character or digit, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, so let's just do that. So let's call it bag because it's kind of a bag object, so to speak. We import oops, the counter method, and yeah, we just take secret. So if I just run this and, and show you what it looks like, let's print out bag. So secret is going to be the string 1807, and counter is just going to show us that we have 1, 1, 1, 8, 1, 0, and 1, 7. Okay, and the keys here are characters instead of digits. That's actually going to be fine. That's going to work for our purposes. But if you're really pedantic about that and picky and you want them to be characters, I think we can just map int to secret here. And then that'll turn them all into integer data types instead of characters. Yeah. Um, let's just keep it a secret though. So that, sorry, let's keep it as um, character hashes just for simplicity. Just so the code's as simple as possible. Okay, so there's our bag. Now what? Okay, we have to make counts for bulls and cows, and we initialize both as zero before we start. Okay, and now we're going to go through um, secret and guess zipped together, right? We're going to go through them. We go back here. We're going to go through them kind of pairwise. So the first element of secret and the first element of guess. And then the second element of secret, the second element of guess, or getting ahead of myself here, etc. So on and so forth. So the way we do that is we can just iterate a b and zip secret guess. So on the first iteration of this loop, I'll go back to this example here. A is going to be one, b is going to be seven. Second iteration of the loop, a is going to be eight, b is going to be eight, so on and so forth. So A is going to be the character in secret, B is going to be the character in guess. So if they're the same, right, this is going to be, oops, this is going to be our, our bulls pass. I'll make that a little more verbose. No, never mind. I'm not going to do that. Okay. For A, B in yeah, zip, secret, guess. Okay. If A is equal to B, then we have a bull for sure. All right. And that token in secret gets consumed. It can't be used anymore. Sorry, I'll go up here. So in the case where A is eight and B is eight and we found a bull, we consume this eight. So nothing else can match up to it. No potential cow. So we go um, bag at B. It's gonna decrement by one. Okay, so as our bulls, that's, that, that should get our um, the correct count of bulls. And now we go through again, once we've done that and adjusted this uh, counter object, we can process the cows. So it's the exact same, but this time it's if they're not the same, because we don't want to re recount bulls again. Um, so for a cow, they're not going to be the same, but the count at um, the count at the character and the thing we're guessing, if there's one of them, at least one of them remaining in the bag, in the counter object, then it's a cow. So then we increment cows. And again, we consume, yeah, we keep this. Again, we consume the bat token in uh, the guess. Okay, so there's our bulls pass, there's our cows pass, so this is a two pass solution. And now we just have to output our answer in uh, the string format that they like. With this A and B, A representing bulls, B representing cows format. So there's a couple ways to do that. You could use string format or you could use F strings. I'll show you both. So if we just do string format, it's gonna be, what is it gonna be? That, those little placeholders, and then you go format, and then we put in bulls and cows. Okay, let's try that out. Okay. But this, you can actually be more succinct than this if you just use f-strings. I've switched over to f-strings kind of recently, and they're a little easier to write out. So you just go 
what am I doing? Not one. It's going to be bulls at A, cows B. And that's it, I think. Okay, let's make sure we didn't mess up anywhere. I think I just got a bad roll on that one because I've used the same solution before and it's been nowhere near that high as long as I'm not making a big mistake anywhere. Yeah. Um, anyway, so that's it. That's how I solved it in what I th think is an intuitive way, just doing the bulls first approach. Um, anyway, yeah, the, the runtime complexity of this is going to be, well, O of 2n, but that's still going to be linear. So it's an O-n solution where n is the length of the... Um, well, either the secret or the guess, they say it's going to be the same. So the length of this list is going to be the, the, the runtime complexity. Space complexity, um, I guess it's, it's just going to be the cardinality of the number of um, tokens possible in each key. So, I mean, this here, it's just going to be digits. So yeah, it's going to be constant space. We're good to go there. Anyway, yeah, hope this was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you have anything to add to this problem or solution. And anyway, yeah, bye.